Hello learners, welcome back to the course on labor welfare and industrial relations. We move to the last lecture, I have clubbed both lecture 4 and 5 together here. We move to the last lecture of module 7 where we look into something which we have already understood. But here my intention again would be to go bit deeper into the act which is nothing but the Maternity Benefit Act 1961, one of the most critical and important act when it comes to the labor welfare part and also I look into the assessment of this act and this assessment uh, could be or would be made on the basis of the essential uh, you know court verdicts and case law discussions. So welcome to this uh, particular class. I am Dr. Abraham Sir I am an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. Now when you look into this particular uh, Maternity Benefit Act, very quickly we will revise this uh, Maternity Benefit Act of 1961. It protects the employment of women at the time of maternity, fully paid wages during the absence from work and to take care of her child. So this has been the, the primary objective. We have seen this, what this act is all about, what are the critical aspects concerning this act. We have also seen that it is for establishments employing 10 or more employees. So it goes much deeper. It goes that, uh, you know, the, the entire act is with the people who are there or, or, you know, who are expecting mothers or are actually in the verge of pregnancy and the post natal care. So, when you are looking into the amendment specifically, the maternity uh, amendment or the maternity amendment bill 2017 is what has been a change maker throughout the entire welfare. We have again slightly introduced this topic. We will go into greater details today. Let us understand with certain specific definitions of what do you mean by what. So let us go into that. Let us understand what do you mean by child. Child includes a stillborn child. Please understand this. So any doubts existing there, there should not be any doubt with respect to that. These definitions are part and parcel of the entire act. So child includes a stillborn uh, child as well. So when you are looking into the entire uh, act, you should understand that establishment means a factory, it could be a mine, a plantation, an establishment wherein persons are employed for the exhibition of equestrian acrobatics and other performance. So, it, it has a certain ambit whereby people are, you know, part and parcel of the particular um, unit. Woman means a woman employed whether directly or through any agency for wages in any particular establishment. And uh, employer means in relation to an establishment which is under the control of the government, a person or authority appointed by the government for the supervision and control of employees or where no person or authority is so appointed, the head of the department. Now when you are looking into the Municipal Corporation of Delhi, some of the particular cases which are associated with respect to this particular act, please understand that you know, the Maternity Benefit Act 1961 aims to provide all facilities to a working woman in a dignified manner so that she may overcome the state of motherhood in an honorable manner. So when you look into the entire uh, uh, the scheme of things, honorably, peacefully, undeterred by the fear of uh, being victimized for the forced absence during the pre or postnatal period has been the critical uh, aspect. But when you are looking into the benefits, you have to understand that which all the, the employer shall not require such women to perform any work unless requested to do so by the employed lady. So one, which negatively affects her pregnancy or the fetus development normally. Two, any work that could result in her miscarrying or otherwise have a negative impact on her health. So every woman has the right to maternity benefit and her employer is responsible for paying them at the amount of the average daily income for the time she was actually away from the work. That is uh, maybe the time leading up to the day of her delivery or on the day she gave birth for the period immediately afterwards. So these would be the actual benefits and on that background you have to understand what is the essence coming out as part of this uh, particular act. You will also see that there are other critical acts when it comes to the practicality of the applicability of this act. Uh, you know, when you are looking into 
something like establishments, Delhi shops and establishment acts, everything coming under that will be included. Similarly, it may be noted that the provisions contained in this act, let us say otherwise provided in sections 5A, 5B shall not attract to any factory or other establishments to which the provisions of the Employee State Insurance Act 1948 is also being referred to. So, these are some of the critical aspects when you look into the Maternity Benefit Act. There are also certain financial benefits. So, according to this law, every woman is entitled to maternity benefits. We have categorically established that and the option of receiving a medical bonus from her employer. This medical bonus part is critical. It includes the medical bonus from her employer in the event that neither prenatal nor postpartum care is provided by the latter at no cost to the employer. So, the employer is responsible for paying all debts including maternity benefits to the women's nominee or legal representative in the event of her death. Now, let us look into uh, some of the, the exemptions women prohibited during the certain period. So, no employer specifically shall uh, unknowingly employ a woman in any establishment during the six weeks immediately following the day of her delivery or her, or her miscarriage. So, please note that this is one of the, the exemption that has come in. No woman shall work in any establishment during the six weeks immediately following the day of her delivery of her miscarriage without prejudice to the provisions of section 6. No pregnant woman shall, on a request being made by her in this behalf, be required by her employer to do uh, to do during the period specified in this particular section. So, any work which is of an arduous nature or which involves, let us say, long hours of standing or which in any way is likely to interfere. Please recall the previous lectures. We have already mentioned this. Any, any activity which is likely to interfere with her pregnancy or the normal development of the fetus or is likely to cause a mis miscarriage or otherwise to adversely affect her health will not be entertained. The period is something as referred, the period of one month immediately preceding the period of six weeks before the date of her expected delivery or any period during the set period of six weeks for which the pregnant woman does not avail the leave of absence under this particular act. And this is what the prohibition of the entire uh, act is. When you look into the claim part, how can you claim a maternity benefit? You have to submit a notice to the employer along with the following information which has been listed. Now, when you have to understand, when you are going to understand the claiming, there are certain explicit conditions for claiming maternity benefit. Only when a woman has really worked for the employer from whom she claims maternity benefits for the period of not less than 80 days in the 12 months immediately preceding the date of her anticipated delivery is she eligible to receive maternity benefits. I, write, I would like to underline this particular statement only when a woman has recently worked for the employer. So, that has been the condition for claiming the maternity benefit. So, before uh, the actual part of claiming the maternity benefit, we should understand what are the preconditions set before claiming the maternity act. Now, methods of claiming the maternity benefit is uh, that any woman wishing to exercise the right to maternity benefit must submit a notice to her employer in the manner and on the form required by the businesses she is employed with in order to be eligible to claim the maternity benefit as provided by the 1961 Act. So, this information uh, should be included in the notice along with, uh, as you can understand, the maternity benefit and any additional funds to which she may be actually entitled in accordance to this Act. Also, the name of the individual who should receive such payments, the nominee specifically, a statement stating that she will not work at the company while collecting these maternity benefits specifically and finally the day her absence from work officially started. So, following the woman's provisions of documentation providing her pregnancy, the employer is required to pay the woman's maternity benefit in advance. So, this is the entire uh, claiming part, claiming of maternity benefit segment. When you are you know, denied the benefit or when you are denied the actual leave, you have to complain. Now, what is the process of filing a complaint? Please note, my intention here was to go a bit deeper and this is what we will try to underscore here. What 
or how will file a complaint filing of a complaint under the maternity benefit act a woman has 60 days to appeal the decision if she is denied maternity benefits or medical benefits released from her job or expelled while on maternity leave so she may do this by approaching an inspector designated by the maternity benefit act please note that in the unlikely event that she disagrees with the inspector's request she has 30 days to make a counter offer to the suggested expert and if she agrees with the inspector's request or if a more significant legal issue is raised she may also file a lawsuit within a year so please note there has been situations where employers are not very prudent not very pragmatic or not very prompt in actually giving uh, the maternity benefit so there are situations you will feel awkward but please note there are employers who have been categorically denying the maternity benefit and the act has to intervene and these are some of the processes when it comes to filing a complaint now it does not stop there there are certain penalty for contravention let's look into those penalties specifically if an employer fails to pay any amount of maternity benefit what will happen i've already mentioned that there are certain people who who come as barriers but when you know uh, such a case of employer failing to pay any amount of maternity benefit what are the penalty for contravention if any employer fails to pay this amount or the maternity benefit to a woman entitled under this act or discharges or dismisses such woman during or on account of her absence from work in accordance with the provisions of this act he shall be or the employer shall be punishable with imprisonment which shall not be less than three months but which may extend to one year and with fine which shall not be less than 2000 rupees but which may extend to 5000 rupees provided that the court may for sufficient reasons to be recorded in a writing impose a particular sentence of imprisonment for a lesser term or fine only in lieu of this imprisonment so that could be one possibility another penalty for contravention could be that if any employer contravenes the provision of this act specifically or the rules made there under he shall or the employer shall if no other penalty is elsewhere provided by or under this act for such contravention be punishable with imprisonment which may extend to one year or with fine which may extend to 5000 rupees or with both possibly so provided that where the contravention is of any provision regarding maternity benefit or regarding payment of any other amount and such maternity benefit or amount has not already been recovered please note the court shall in addition recover such maternity benefit or amount as if it were a fine and pay the same to the present entitled so this has been the penalty for contravention and what happens in the in the scenario of an employer contravenes the provisions of this act when you look into maternity benefits amendment act 2017 we have to understand this from the changes that have come in in this particular act but before that you have to understand that there has been a period of granting maternity benefit uh, which we have already touched upon in accordance with uh, if you refer the act subsection 5 of section 5 if a woman's job requires her to work from home the employer may permit her to do so after she has claimed the maternity benefit for the time period and on the conditions that they may mutually agree upon so what has happened is that the maximum time a woman may get maternity benefits is 26 weeks now not including the eight weeks prior to the due date of her anticipated delivery and this is as per the section 5 now it has been amended by the maternity benefit amendment act 2017 another change or furthermore what we understand is that in the event that a woman passes away within this time the maternity benefit will only be paid for the days leading up to and including the day of her passing so according uh, Lee, you will see the section 5 uh, specifically i think subsection 4 a woman who legally adopts a child under the age of three months or a mother who commissions an adoptions an adoption will be eligible for maternity benefit i have already mentioned this it is not only with respect to the biological birth it is also with respect to the adoption practice for maternity benefits for a period of 12 weeks starting on the day the child is given to the adopting mother or the commissioning mother as applicable so 
this has been uh, some of the critical clauses or critical aspects when you look into the maternity benefit act we have already seen came into force on april 1st 2017 the clauses relating to child care facility came into force on july 1 2017 so this offers better benefits has better reach and has better coverage and promotes better child care now when you are looking into the entire amendment act specifically 2017 we have to understand the main highlights uh, of this amendment act in material benefit. So when you look into the history, the maternity benefits amendment bill 2017 was approved by Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha in 2016 and the president of India gave his uh, assent on March 27, 2017. The maternity benefits amendment act 2017's provision became operative in as we have seen in the previous slide April 1, 2017. However, the clauses relating to child care facility came into force on July 2017 only. So, the act after the change still adheres to its fundamental principles, but clearly it offers better benefits and promotes better child care as you can see from the different salient features of the amended act. Now, according to what we understand, th there are four levels of this statute that have you know undergone the following changes. One is the duration of leave part. When you look into the leave, the amendment offers 26 weeks of maternity leave, not to exceed 8 weeks prior to the anticipated due date unless they have two or more living children. So, this has been what we see that the overall period of maternity leave is shown to have increased by 117 percentage since the previous act. So, additionally, it complies with the ILO suggestion of 18 weeks or more. So, this amendment specifically passed in order to provide mothers enough time for self-healing and certainly to improve the child care both of which would lower the rate of infant mortality, otherwise a big issue within our country. Now, when you look into the adoption part, adoption is an exception to this rule. Please note, a commissioning mother or a woman who adopts a child under 3 months old is eligible for 12 weeks of maternity leave. Now, Another significant factor could be job protection. The original acts discharge and dismissal clause remain unchanged. When you look into the third factor, which is nothing but the financial benefits, no immediate financial benefits have been put into practice from part of the amended act. However, if you look into the amendment, it stipulates that a woman has the right to work from home provided both her employer and she mutually agrees to this. This is what I've already mentioned with a change in work order, with the change in work culture, with the, the new work contracts emerging. This has been fundamental and this has been critical. And please note this is pre-COVID. This has happened 2017. So this is also very significant and futuristic in its own uh, terms and conditions. So every business with 50 or more employees should include a crash facility. Now, we'll talk about the crash facility in detail. So, either independently or as part of the common areas, you should have a crash facility. So, this has been another benefit. The employer will permit the woman four visits to the child care provider specifically. Now, this has been the significant difference. Now, when you look into, uh, you know, point-wise understanding what we have discussed, the most important modification extends a leave from 12 to 26 weeks. So, this according to the WHO, a child should be nursed for 24 weeks after birth to lower the death risk and uh, this has been certainly taken into consideration as part of the amended or amendment act 2017. So additionally, it ought to lower the number of women quitting their jobs also. Please note, uh, this is a significant period whereby they can recover and come back to the job. And as a result of, uh, you know, the sufficient maternity leave, uh, generally, now the women are not quitting the job. Additionally, the longer leave period is in accordance with the maternity benefits convention. Uh, the suggestion number 183 as you can see. So, the addition of maternity leave for commissioning and adopting women is an important one that allows them to take care of themselves and the children while also honoring their parenthood specifically. Now, when you look into the Maternity Benefit Amendment Act, please note 
that there has been certain critical impact an employer can allow a woman to work from home during pregnancy as I already mentioned because of the change working uh, situation uh, if the nature of work is suggesting that. So after the maternity leave period the women can also use the option of working from home for a mutually agreed upon period as agreed between the employee and the employer. So this has been significant when it comes to uh, you know the changing work contracts also. Now let's look into uh, the typical um, addition that has come up in uh, let's say with the amended act. What we can understand is that with the amendment in the particular act something that gained prominence was the crush facility. Now till uh, the earlier a maternity benefit act the act only looked into people who were or uh, you know about pregnancy um, you know uh, pre and postnatal care etc so all those aspects were traditional now it is also understood that the mother needs to be with the child for some part of her uh, some part of his or her initial uh, you know childhood days so that is why even uh, to support a working woman or a working mother there has been facility of crush that has been brought in by the amended act. So I would like to go deeper into this, understand the notion, the idea behind it and how it actually benefits the working mother in every significant situation. So let's look into the crush very quickly. Crush is a facility which enables parents to leave their children while they are at work. So when you look into this particular act, section 11a, every establishment to which the act applies and have 50 or more employees must establish a crush facility within such distance as may be prescribed. So this has been fundamental in bringing about the change in the life of such working mothers. The crush must be established either separately or along with the common facilities. So the employer must allow women at least four visits a day to the crush and it shall also include the interval for rest allowed to her. So every establishment is required to intimate in a writing and electronically to every woman at the benefit at the time of appointing her initially regarding every benefit available under the Maternity Benefit Act. So this has been uh, a critical clear instructions given to the employer that all this information has to be communicated clearly. When you are looking into you know the different aspects in a case of every establishment it is required that this communication should be proper both in writing and electronically let's say you are joining one organization there should be clear-cut communication that these are the maternity benefit uh, or benefits that the organization is intending to give you and accordingly they can plan uh, whether to actually you know continue or actually join the company in the first place and to continue there when you are looking into crush uh, how uh, you know it has to be constructed there has been a detailed aspect uh, you know how it would be actually created the location the facilities all these aspects are clearly covered under this act when you look into the factor crush is for whom let's f understand that first the use of actually the crush facility is proposed to be extended to children of the age group of six months to six years to, of all employees including temporary daily wage consultant and contractual personnel. So be sure of this that it is not only the permanent employee. Many a times we know there has been uh, cases or situations or circumstances where there has been some undue advantage given to the permanent employee. But this is not the case with this particular act and the crush part in this particular act. So please note that the use of crush facility is proposed to be extended to children of the age group of six months to six years of all employees including temporary, daily wage, consultant and even contractual person. When you look into the crush location as I've already mentioned the center should be near. It should not be far away. The mother should be visiting uh, her child and that is the requirement at the workplace site or the beneficiary's neighborhood almost within 500 meters. That is the legality that is associated with the location part. Now when you are looking into the timings part, the crush preferably should open for 8 hours to 10 hours. In this case, the workers can follow a certain shift system. So in case the establishment let's say has day and night shifts, then the crush should also be run in shifts. So that is what is intended by the timing uh, that has to be done in case of shifts. Now when you are looking into the facilities provided, Please note, as you can see, the crush should be in, made in concrete with a minimum space of 10 to 12 square feet per child. 
with proper ventilation, proper drinking water facility and with no unsafe places. Let us say open drain should not be there, no pits should not be there, uh, garbage bins near the centers, all these things should be taken care of. Uh, further, there should be a guard who should have undergone police verification uh, with a clear background check, ramps should be there, handrails should be there, there should be every crush should have one supervisor per crush, the crush should have minimum of one trained worker for every 10 children. So, this has been the ratio that is mentioned in the particular act when it comes to the crush. When you look for every 20 children above the age of 3, the crush should have one trained worker along with the helper. Please note, no plumbers, drivers and electricians and other outside persons should be allowed inside the crash when the children are present. So, this has been phenomenal and it has been very futuristic and looks into the possible potential threats that can otherwise come in. When you look into uh, the, the act, in finer details, you will see that a crush monitoring committee should be formed having representations uh, from among the crush workers, the parents also and the administration. And also, it forms a grievance redressal committee or there is a requirement to form such a, re a grievance redressal committee for inquiring into instances of sexual abuse as well. So, this has been certain, uh, you know, underlining features when it comes to the crush within the ambit of the act. Now, let us quickly look into some of the very critical cases. The first one is Srimadhi Archana Panedi versus the state of Madhya Pradesh and others. Srimadhi Archana Panedi versus state of MP and others 2016 case. So, the issue was about whether the practice the issue was about whether the petitioners as contractual employees were eligible for maternity leave benefits. So, after considering the various judgment, the Madhya Pradesh High Court concluded that the constitution requires her employer to give her access to all the amenities she needs to give birth and there is no reason why a woman who works as a contract employee should not receive the benefit of the Maternity Benefit Act. So, please note the petitioner is to be given maternity benefit by the respondents. So, this has been one of the statements or one of the cases which has unequivocally underscored the relevance of the Maternity Benefit Act. When you look into another important case, Dr. Rachna Chaurasia was a state of UP and others, uh, which was passed in 2017. So, in this particular case, the state government was ordered by a division bench of the High Court of Madras to provide 180 days of paid maternity leave to all women, regardless of the type of employment they hold. It could be permanent, it could be temporary, it could be ad hoc, or even on a contractual basis. So, all female uh, employees who are hired regularly, contractually, ad hoc or temporarily and have a minor uh, child or minor children who must be 18 years of age or younger and must be granted a 730 day child leave according to the supplementary instructions given to the state's critical response. So, maternity leave should not be separated from or excluded from a woman employee's employment term. So, it is part and parcel of the woman employee's employment term and this has been underscored with this particular case law. When you are looking into the final case, what we have today is Prachison was Ministry of Defence 2021, a very recent case. The Karnataka High Court reaffirmed that the work from home advantage under Section 5, clause, sub clause 5 of the revised 2017 Act may only be granted in circumstances where the nature of the task provided to women permits her to do so. So, in the case of Prachison was Ministry of Defence uh, 21 clearly underscores the relevance of the work from home arrangement also. So, please note over the, the entire module what we have tried to understand is that we have gone deeper into every single possible welfare amenities acts which we have with us. We have seen the background, we have seen the evolution, we have seen the timeline. Most importantly, we have seen the applicability of this act. We have seen what happens when there are barriers set up for these or against these act. We have also seen what are the grievance redressal mechanisms available with you with this act. So, this module is more of an eye-opener to you. Initially, we were setting a certain background with respect to the understanding of different acts, but this module categorically has been an eye-opener whereby you can actually see, understand, you know, whatever happens, the act has been created 
in a good will, in a, in, in a bona fide intention with a certain good will that has to be circulated or trickled down to the employee. But if there are barriers, if there are uh, circumstances or situations that have been created that should go against the people or go against the act or go against the employee, then the act will intervene. There are sufficient checks and balance mechanisms which you have tried to thoroughly dissect in this particular module and understand. So that's all from uh, this particular module and this particular class. See you with another module, another class, some other day. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.